The death toll rises past 2,000 folks in Morocco earthquake. India is getting more desperate for food by the day, and UK's second largest city declares bankruptcy. Plus, lots of reports from you all about Winn-Dixie, about canned foods uh, getting thinner cans, commercial truck orders, corn crops, and so much more. Let's jump right into it. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar. I'm an accountant, but you guys send in your reports, and we mix that in with some of the day-to-day -day news, stuff that's not really making big headlines in the uh, mainstream media, but is important for all of us. We do want to thank our sponsor, Genesis Gold Group. Uh, if you have retirement funds and you want to get them into something safer than stocks and bonds, you might want to talk to Jonathan and his team at Genesis Gold Group. There'll be a link at the end of the video. Please do continue to like and subscribe. There's uh, stuff going on out there. If you're familiar with what's going on with Economic Ninja, uh, Survival Lily, uh, it seems like we're going through another round of crackdowns on these platforms. So please make sure that you are liking videos and, and doing what you can uh, to uh, support your favorite con content creators out there. Not just me, but you know, all of your folks out there. All right, so there was a magnitude 6.8 earthquake that hit 40 miles south of Marrakesh in Morocco. This was on September 8th, and we're now seeing 2,000 people have been confirmed dead. Um, about 2,000 more are injured. Uh, about half of those, or, or three quarters of those, are seriously or critically injured. This is overwhelming the hospitals over there. And as we see these type of events happening, I, I, I want you to get into the habit of not just seeing these news stories, but putting yourself into the midst of them and saying, what would I do in this situation? Uh, and trying to mentally prepare yourself of what it's like to go through these type of situations. Um, but uh, remote villages were cut off from rescue workers. And even as of yesterday, some of the villages and the outlying areas up in the mountains, has happened up in the mountains, um, are still not being able to be reached by rescue workers. So, um, a lot of these villages lost power and internet as well as cell phone service. And uh, that, that made so the emergency calls aren't getting through. A lot of issues with those things. Businesses, homes, places of worships um, destroyed by this earthquake. And, uh, and this is an area of the world where insurance coverage is rare. And so a lot of these places of business, uh, work, uh, home places, uh, are not insured, and a lot of people are devastated, not to mention the massive amount of casualties. Most of the casualties seem to be coming from the city of Marrakesh, um, so uh, the outlying areas seem to fare a little bit better. At least that's the reports we're getting so far. It could be just that the rescue teams haven't gotten out uh, of the cities uh, that much just yet, um, but word, word will be continuing to filter in. But it's just, it's utter devastation there. It's, it's not as bad as the Turkey... Uh, Syria earthquake last year, but uh, it is it is pretty serious. Um, India, so now they they went out and they they banned exports of the cheap rice um, before, and then but they were still allowed to export the expensive rice. Then they put into place a ban on exporting any rice, and now we're starting to see them tearing down tariffs. Uh, that they're placing on products coming into the country, food products coming into the country. Uh, they're trying to get as much, it's clear that they're trying to get as much food into the country as possible. They are seriously worried about the stability of their country and whether they will have enough food to feed their population going forward. Are you paying attention yet, right? That's the question because we're seeing some food shortages. We're seeing some, you know, some products being out uh, occasionally. You know, you can go there early in the day and poof, there it is again. You can go to a different store and still find it. But we're seeing places around the world are getting very serious. Governments around the world are getting very serious about this. Um, food exports out of the United States, especially of grains, are skyrocketing. We are watching the, um, we don't have actual national grain reserves, but what we do have is we have a lot of farmers, a lot of corporations that have grain on hand, um, but when it's purchased, it goes to wherever it's purchased, and these folks are selling to the highest bidder, and we're seeing a lot of this grain uh, disappearing, uh, and through the Great Lakes, we're seeing a record amount of grain going out through the Great Lakes right now, 
and uh, I'm, st I'm still trying to get hard numbers for export numbers, but the crops are coming in a lot lower yield, but it looks like we already have um, about the same or maybe a little bit higher of purchases than what we usually have, but with less crops coming in in the next couple months. That shows that we're going to have some issues with supply here in the United States. Um, now, there should be enough in the system to soak that up, probably, but we don't have hard numbers on that just yet. But it's definitely getting a lot tighter. Uh, so UK's second largest city, for those of you who don't know, I was one of them, didn't, if you don't know what the second largest city in the UK is, uh, the city of Birmingham. It's not just in Alabama. So um, city of Birmingham is like a modern day Chicago, apparently, uh, they, they've uh, declared bankruptcy. They've begun defaulting on their debt obligations and they've slashed operations to emergency services. That's um, essential services only in the city of Birmingham. And uh, they, uh, they got themselves into a financial pit and they can't dig themselves out of it. We'll see if bailouts uh, come soon. But uh, we're starting to see that those debt defaults happening across the world. This is from Elaine. Aldi has purchased all the Winn-Dixie stores in the Southeast. Uh, and, uh, and that's true. That happened uh, a few weeks ago. Um, we started seeing those kind of reports. But, but for those of you in the Southeast, and you're kind of wondering what's going on with that. Um, so what they're going to do is, because I started kind of asking that question, what is Aldi going to do with all these Winn-Dixie stores, right? Well, they're going to convert some of them over to Aldi. So if, if they're in an advantageous area where Aldi doesn't have a, a store yet, uh, they're going to convert them into an Aldi. Um, but obviously, Winn-Dixie stores are a lot bigger than Aldi stores tend to be. So I'm not sure how that's going to work exactly. But a bunch of the Winn-Dixie stores are going to stay Winn-Dixie stores. Uh, they're just going to be under the ownership of Aldi. So that's apparently what's going to happen to them. If you're not in the southeast of the United States, then you're probably like, what's a Winn-Dixie, right? Um, well, it's a grocery store. That's what it is. It's a cultural experience. Uh, this is from a viewer in North Idaho. I took my mom shopping today at Grocery Outlet and at least two dozen of the signs, um, uh, and they showed the signs, uh, they sent me an email with the signs, um, were posted throughout the store, basically saying, we're sorry that this product is out, we're having supply issues. Uh, when you see those signs going up, and especially when there's two dozen of them, uh, that is concerning. That is with the, uh, the store's grocery outlet. Um, the shortage, as they write, the shortages have reached the Pacific Northwest. All right, this is from Professor Chris, and this is a question for you guys out there, um, whether some of you want to get into experimentation or whether you can just uh, kind of tell me if there's any uh, truth to this. Perhaps some of you work in the industry that can answer this question. Uh, I have been noticing for a while that cans, i.e. the cans for canned foods, are thinner walled, meaning that they're using less material, steel, tin-plated steel, right, to make a can. Uh, when I go into my preps and compare a can from five years ago versus a can today, they are very different. A can from five years ago is hard to dent by crushing um, by the hand unopened, whereas cans I buy today, I can easily dent a current can by squeezing it just in my hand. From a prepper perspective, we all know that cans with pull tops have a shorter shelf life than the cans that need to be opened with the can opener, right? Uh, it would not surprise me if the current thinner cans have a reduced shelf life for the food inside. Can you please ask the community, and here's where we are, uh, if anyone works in a can factory and knows this for sure. Now I got on the Google search and started trying to research this myself, and all I could really find, because I figured they'd be like bragging about how they're using less steel, you know, to save the planet and stuff. Um, and what I could find is, uh, is something from 2011, um, where it said basically that they're using 30% uh, percent less uh, material than what they were 20 years ago, which is like 1990. Um, and then I saw other people kind of quoting that, and they're, they're saying like, in the last 30 years, but then they were kind of doing that from my current date. So uh, it seems like no one else has uh, actually reported on that. Um, so if you have information on, on how much less material you're, they're using in these cans, um, or just even just sharing about uh, your experiences with the cans, um, I will give you a couple quick practical tips here though. If they have the pop top 
uh, can, make sure you're not stacking them, okay? Uh, it's The cans, as long as they stay sealed, are going to be good, whether the pop top or whatever. The problem with the pop top ones is if you have the pressure changes, uh, the, the seals can un unseal themselves if there's enough pressure change. Also, if you stack the cans or if they get kind of warped because they have weight on them, um, they can, you know, the break the seal. And if they break the seal, then of course the, the food goes bad. So don't stack pull top cans. Uh, if you need to stack them, make sure you use like a cardboard box um, between the layers. Um, but even then, you probably shouldn't do that. Just just try to use regular cans uh, for bottom layers and then just always put the, the, the pull top cans on the top layer if you can. Um, but generally speaking, as long as they stay sealed, they'll, they'll still be good. Um, but uh, if uh, whenever you have dented cans, of course, uh, they, they're probably good, but um, you need to be wary about uh, dented cans that have been sitting for too long, um, especially if the dent starts to bulge outward. Um, of course, if there's any kind of botulism or something growing inside the can, it's going to start expanding that can. So any kind of can that looks a little bulgy, um, that's, you should be super suspicious of that. Uh, but if the can is just kind of dented in modern cans, uh, that's not a super big issue. Back in the day, they had the, the BPA lining, which um, almost all can makers, I, I don't know if all can makers have gotten rid of the BPA lining, um, but uh, th that uh, that shouldn't impact it anymore unless it's a severe dent. Anyway, um, post down in the comments down below your thoughts on cans or your information. I know you guys have strong feelings about cans. I'm a big canner here in the sense of I purchase a lot of cans and I've stockpiled a lot of cans because, uh, well, I mean, it's just nice. You, you know, you just don't want to deal with like cooking something, right? You have buckets of rice and beans, but you'd have to cook, you have to cook those for quite a while. It's nice to just be able to pop a can, warm it up and, you know, or even not warm it up, just eat it out of the can and you're fine. Um, that That's really convenient. And uh, it's not really that expensive to get uh, decent canned goods like chili and, and corned beef hash and these other things. So anyway, uh, Lisa says, uh, a water utility in nearby area, Indiana, is raising water rates by 60%. The residents are stunned. The reason given was increased costs and the need for newer facilities. 60% increase in cost. That is ma mismanagement at its finest, folks. Uh, I, I went to school for uh, public administration, which is like nonprofit and and local government kind of management. And uh, if you're not, if they're not thinking about replacing the facilities that they have, if that's not built into the rates, then they're just mismanaging them. That, that is, um, people should lose their jobs for that. Uh, if, they, if they get to the point where like, this hasn't been done, uh, somebody dropped the ball big time. And we shouldn't be seeing those kind of spikes. And uh, yet that's what we're seeing across the board, aren't we? Uh, this is from Michael. I plowed a parking lot 15 years ago that was a GM supplier. So this is talking about the UAW strikes um, that may be happening later this week uh, with the, uh, the Detroit automakers. So he plowed um, snow from the GM supplier. If I failed to keep the lot plowed and keep the trucks moving in and out of the docks and shut down um, production for the assembly plants, I got a $10,000 a minute fine for shutting down the plant. I bet today it's closer to $20,000 a minute when you consider one car a minute rolls off the assembly line. Add up all the final assembly plants in the USA and you can get an understanding for how much money uh, will be lost uh, with this strike. So we're not talking about a small impact to the to the uh, US economy. We're talking about a big impact to the US economy. So he was uh, plowing for a supplier near the plant and they would send just in time uh, parts to the plant uh, so they needed to be continuing to get those parts there. If they didn't get the parts there uh, in time then the main plant would shut down, right? So, and that would be what he would be fined uh, for. Uh, this is from a viewer from Canada. The canned vegetables used to be a full aisle here. Now it's a quarter of what it used to be. 
granola bars uh, were basically gone. Uh, eggs were recently moved, and there are only 12 egg cartons of Great Value brand uh, when there used to be several shelves of eggs. Uh, the vegetable oil aisle is also sparse. Pasta aisle, as you have been reporting recently, it's starting to look emptier and emptier. We're hearing that more and more, aren't we? This is from an anonymous uh, viewer. Vehicles that we order for our fleet, so commercial vehicles, right, uh, take as long as two years to fill. That is if they are not canceled outright by the manufacturers. Uh, however, there is no guarantee that the order will be filled. Uh, due to extended lead times, vehicle prices almost always uh, are increased by the time we receive the vehicles. If you look at the Producer Pride Index for Motor Vehicles and Equipment at the Bureau of Labor Statistics website, the government website, right, you will see that the index remains elevated at an extreme level. The auto industry is facing uncertainty due to the transition to electric vehicles, uh, spiraling inflation and ongoing supply chain issues and shortages are exacerbating these, uh, these issues. So, um, and that's what we're hearing from a lot of the manufacturers out there is that everyone's trying to switch over to EV production because that's the future. And so they're not making investments in their existing infrastructure. And, uh, and when you have these type of lead times, the idea that you can get an order in but not actually fulfill the order for two years is crazy. And that's the industry standard. This is from Angela. Uh, my hubby works for UAW in Hagerstown, Maryland with Volvo uh, slash Mac. Uh, they build the engines and transmissions for semi-trucks. They are most likely going to go on strike at the beginning of October. So now the contract ends this Thursday at 11.59 p.m. Uh, they could go on strike as early as Friday, technically, um, but we haven't gotten indication that they will go on strike immediately. Um, they, they should be getting some warning on that shortly if, if they are going to do that. What will most likely happen is they will um, yeah, strike like a week or two later, and so like maybe beginning of October. Uh, they got a real bad deal uh, on, their, uh, on their last contract and hope to improve on this contract. Also, shelves here in South Central PA are absolutely horrible. We've been canning and stocking up as much as possible. I don't know how anyone can see, can't see the forest in front of them, right? You get so focused on little data points that you can't see what's going on overall. This is from Missy in Middle Tennessee area. Discount Grocer. Uh, their freezer section was closed down. It broke three weeks ago, and they're still waiting on parts to fix it. Three weeks ago, their entire freezer section. Crazy. Um... If, if these stores, if these businesses can't get parts, what do you think will happen when your stuff breaks? Right? Uh, definitely something, uh, this is Robbie, definitely something going on with self-rising flour in our area in North Louisiana. Uh, about a month ago, Walmart had White Lily on clearance, and we haven't seen any self-rising, but a little great value. Uh, All-purpose flour is pretty well stocked. And so, obviously, uh, self-rising flour is just some baking uh, powder with salt inside regular flour. Um, but we are seeing some issues with baking powder out there. So maybe that's what's kind of going on with that. But we are seeing some of these other kinds of flour uh, going into issue out there. Uh, also, uh, I believe the, uh, the self-rising flour uses a slightly different kind of flour, too. And maybe that's what's going on with that, too. I don't know. Um, Nancy says, update, no cottage cheese at Aldi in Eastern Virginia, and dairy milk and creamers are thin. And this is from Farmy in Kansas. Corn yields are low in many areas this year, and farmers are opting to take what they harvest to ethanol plants rather than food and animal feed production because the price for ethanol plants is higher than food and feed. So you may have fuel this winter, but you may not have food this winter, is basically the amount of it. Ethanol has more stringent quality requirements than food and feed grade as well, uh, so that um, so what food, uh, so what corn is left for food is not great quality. 
expect availability and quality to decline. So you're hearing straight from the farmer's mouth um, from Kansas there. If anyone knows corn, them folks do. Now, uh, Kansas has been hit rather hard by the, the drought, uh, particularly there, um, but uh, some of the areas in the surrounding uh, Missouri was, has been especially hard hit uh, by the drought, but, uh, but Kansas a bit too. All right, folks, keep your reports coming in. Just, let, uh, just use the word update in your comments on any one of the videos here and let us know what you're seeing or what you're hearing at your workplaces. If you want to find out more information from Genesis Gold Group about what you can do with your retirement funds, funds to uh, make them more secure, uh, there is a link right here. You can just fill out your information there. All right, folks, if you want to check out another video, there's one right up here from this channel. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you later. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report.